Welcome everybody to the OPT Network. You know, if you've watched this show at all, how I love the word possibility. Well, our guest this morning speaks to possibility through the power of potential. Her name is Deborah Torres, and you might remember her from Shark Tank. She has an incredible story. Deborah, good morning and welcome. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So we talk about on this show all the time, being able to take that leap of faith and to step out of safety and into the unknown. And you did just that. But did you realize that that's what you were doing when you did it? Definitely not. <laughs> I think that, um, I think that, you know, things are happening and then you go moment by moment and then you, you turn, you look back and, and you see, you know, in, in hindsight, the impact and the incredible thing that has happened. Um, and, and really just standing in gratitude at that point. Mm. So take us back to how you got here. You know, you, you, you talked about your dad having diabetes and the family wanting to get healthy because of your dad. Tell us about that. Um, so long story short, you know, I had went uh, vegan uh, maybe a year before my father was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. And when I went vegan, um, two things happened. One was I met a man who I, I was like in a in the grocery store and there was a man and he was, we were standing in the same aisle looking at what we were going to buy. And he just randomly asked me, you know, Hey, what are you going to be? Um, what are you going to be getting? And then I'm like, I don't know. And I'm so hungry. He was like, yeah, I, I don't eat meat anymore. And I'm like, Oh, why? And he tells me, Oh, I, I visited a factory farm. And, um, randomly he said, he just like went with some friends and um, he saw that the, the cows were crying, um, like tears were coming out of their eyes. And he, oh. from that point forward, he, he stopped eating meat. And I, it, it oh. shocked me at that time because I didn't know that animals could cry, which seems like a no brainer. But at the time I just was so surprised. And so that had happened maybe like a, a week, a week or so before I went vegan. And um, what did you think uh, when he told you that? Because I, I never I never would have thought of that. I was shocked. I was sh I, it, it made sense. It's like, well, well, yeah, if, if somebody knows that they're going to pass and they, they could see their family members, you know, being slaughtered, of course they would cry, you know. But um, I think that, you know, we don't we don't see that. So it's just something that's silent and in the background, you know, until you it, it's brought to your attention. You're not even thinking, oh, I'm eating a dead animal or somebody that was alive before this. And this is providing their life is now providing nutrients to me. Um, yeah, it's something that you don't really think about. It, it, it shocked me. I was mm -hmm. like, tears, like tears, like tears. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And so, um, and so does that profoundly just affect you where you're like, I'm, I'm never going to eat meat again? At the moment, I, I think I, I felt like I needed to do some research. When he said that, it, it just sounded so foreign to me. Um, it was something that was like, oh, tears? Like, wait, mm -hmm. what? Um, yeah. So it, I think I think I did some homework. I think I at that time I did a little bit of research. I don't even know that I was completely convinced. I think that unless you see something like that for yourself, right. it's it's like, oh, you you hear you heard that this happened. So um, I was actually walking in the grocery store um, shortly after that. And I was I was definitely going to get a chicken burrito. Like <laughs> that was in my mind. I was set on that. Mm -hmm. I was so hungry. And as I'm walking to go get, and I'm at, I'm at a Whole Foods in Chicago, mm -hmm. as I'm walking to go get um, this chicken burrito, it just enters my mind, like, don't eat the meat. And I was like, oh, I'm so hungry. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I was just like, no, like, uh, no, I'm definitely going to have, I knew all the, I knew I was going to have it with like corn and guacamole, onion. I, I knew how I was going to build my burrito. Mm -hmm. 
And um, I was just, it, it entered my mind again. And I'm like, okay, if this is real, like if this thought is like something true, uh, let me hear a really loud noise. And within seconds, somebody dropped a glass plate on the floor and it shattered. And I was like, oh, maybe there's, maybe something's wrong with it. So I remember um, it wasn't until maybe like, like a week or so later that I was like, okay, I need to like go vegan. And, and this is at a time when like vegan restaurants weren't even a thing yet. Mm -hmm. This is, this is in like 2013. So uh, this is a while ago. Um, so yes, so I went vegan when no, nobody that I knew was vegan and I was traveling at the time and I ate like chips and hummus and, you know, a spinach and just random things, whatever mm -hmm. I could get my hands on in traveling. And, um, a year later I returned home. Um, and, uh, you know, my family had like a, like a cookout. And so they had all their, their ribs and their fried chicken and, all this food. And I remember my mom making like little vegan sausages for me. I thought that was cute. Um, <laughs> wow. mm -hmm. And so uh, maybe like maybe three days later, my parents sat at me and my family and my siblings down and said, you know, he has type two diabetes. And I was just shocked. I was shocked because I was thinking in my mind, you're going to eat your way to death. Basically. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, in, in my family, we have seen family members, um, church family members pass away from diabetes, lose their limbs from diabetes, just like a slow progression until eventually there's a funeral. So um, I was just like, OK, we need to do something to prevent this from happening. Um, I had seen a documentary years before that. Um, it's called Simply Raw. It's on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Um and they basically, they took a couple individuals who had type 2 diabetes and other complications because of it. They put them all on a raw vegan diet for 30 days. Of course, it was very hard. And they documented their journey. And at the end of the 30 days, they were all completely healed from their diabetes. Wow. So I was like, you know what? We need to do this diet. Like, I don't know if it works. Uh, but I'm willing to try in order to, you know, an effort to save my father's life before it gets worse. Mm -hmm. So um, I was like, OK, let's do this. So let's does do everybody this. does everybody buy into it? Because, you know, fried chicken and ribs, you know, that's a far cry from vegan. So this is, right? this is like a shock <laughs> to everybody's system. So what do they say? Um, so uh, my siblings, um, I remember them saying like, I'll do it like, but with probably some attitude. Um, and I remember them saying like, oh, after this, you know, we're, we're going to go back to eating meat. And I was like, okay, that's fine. Um, uh, my dad definitely did not want to do it in the beginning. He was not for it. Um, but I was, I would tell my mom, like, we have to do this. Like we have, this is not a joke because mm -hmm. eventually he's going to lose, he's going to be shooting up insulin now. And then eventually he's going to lose limbs. And then eventually he's going to pass mm -hmm. if we don't do something now, mm -hmm. it will at least try to do something. So, um, yeah, I remember my dad not wanting to do it and me having to be like, no, you need to do this. Like we have to do this now. Like we have to do it now before it gets worse. Mm -hmm. So, um, so you, so, set yeah. out, so you set out on the journey. We're going to take a break here, but when we come back, we're going to talk about what happens after the family decides to go vegan and how vegan and vegan fried chicken literally changes everything. Deborah Torres is our guest this morning. You'll remember her from Shark Tank. We're back with more right after this. Welcome back, everybody, to the OPT Network. Our guest this morning, Deborah Torres. She turned down a million dollars on Shark Tank. And our gross is 76000 Wait, wait, that doesn't add up. Th that's confusion. I think you got it backwards. I don't want to stick a pin in the balloon here, but... But your numbers are backwards. I you, you can't have 60000 in sales and make seventy-three. Oh, my God. <laughs> but asking for $500,000 for 10%, is it's a little bit crazy, yeah. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. And so that was a decision. Wait, 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 let me finish. That's a decision you made, okay? That's not my decision. You're not that clear on your numbers. 
Just being honest with you. But you're not worth $500,000. I'd have to have 120% no, of the company. No, Kevin, you mean she's not worth $5 million? I'm saying she's not worth $500,000. There's no way to get to where we need to go with you. I'm out. Now she's selling one million pounds of vegan fried chicken. So after the family agrees, because this is like changing everything about the way that you eat, the way that you were raised eating. Tell me about the change to vegan for everybody. And what does that look and feel like initially? So when we all finally decided, okay, we're going to do this, we're going to try this. Um, we decided to do it for 90 days and not 30 days because we wanted a more lifestyle change in terms of applying more whole foods, more raw foods into our diet um, long term. Um, we also decided that we were going to walk, take a, an hour walk every day. Um, in the beginning, we were it was pretty basic uh, salads, smoothies, fruit salads. Okay. That was going on for probably about a week, a week and a half. Um, you, you know, your, your body goes into detox mode. And so um, as you're detoxing, eating less, taking, you know, drinking a lot of water, exercising, you're, a whole shift, a whole change is happening. Um, you know, you're, you're going to experience a lot of emotions. You're definitely going to want to cheat your diet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um uh, and so I knew, okay, if we don't, if I don't change this and start uh, making foods that are just as delicious as what we had before, we're not, none of us are going to survive this diet. So I, I remember getting like a dehydrator. I got um, a food processor, um, a Vitamix blender, multiple things to make the, the raw foods that we were eating um, taste better and start, you know, making recipes that were similar to what we had before. So we started having like raw spaghetti, raw tacos, raw lasagna, raw burgers, it, delicious stuff. I mean, like very, very good. Mm -hmm. Now tell <laughs> delicious. me, now you know, people are thinking, okay, raw lasagna and raw burgers help us with that. What does that mean? Okay, like for cheese, we would I would make uh, cashew cheese and have like and flavor it with like raw garlic, onions, red bell peppers. Um, you know, once you start, you know, incorporating and, and testing out raw uh, food flavors and textures, you're gonna learn pretty quickly that all the flavor, you know, that cooked food gets comes from plants and you're going to, you're going to get really creative with what you're doing and be able to apply different things. So like for spaghetti that I was saying, um, I was spiralized zucchini okay. and then, um, make, uh, like the meat of it out of mushrooms and walnuts Ooh. and then season that. Mm -hmm. And so it would be very, it would be delicious. It would be very good. Mm -hmm, <laughs> very, mm -hmm, very good. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you started your creative juices start working. Exactly. Okay, so yeah. tell us about the raw the raw burgers. Um, same that that ground beef would come out of uh, uh, mushrooms, walnuts. You would season it, put it in the dehydrator, and then it it, it you know it's together mm -hmm. um, like ground, I should say. And then once you dehydrate it, it, it becomes a little like drier, not as wet, and so you you get your burger from there. Wow. And so yeah. now everybody's starting to embrace it because you have some foods that you're that you're normally eating, but but just different, but they're still tasty. Exactly. OK, exactly. so when do you go for the vegan fried chicken and tell us what that, you know, without giving us, you know, all the recipe, what does that consist of? So um, for after, the texture. So, yes. So after um, the raw diet, um, the way that that ended, by the way, is because my father visited two doctors after the 90 days and he was completely healed from diabetes. Wow. He still is diabetes free. And so after we were, you know, um, figuring out, OK, well, what are we going to do now? All of my family said we're definitely going to be vegan mm -hmm. because they got to see the changes that occurred, you know, um, and so we returned to eating 
cooked foods, but still remain plant based. Okay. And so I was like, okay, how can I make, you know, cooked food, cooked vegan food taste just as delicious as what we were eating before? Mm-hmm. And that's when I started experimenting um, to try to make, you know, vegan um, ribs, vegan burgers, vegan fried chicken. And so a lot of trial and error um, Mm -hmm. in in making cooked vegan products. But um, that's exactly how Atlas Monroe was born. Wow. And so when do you decide, okay, I, I'm going to turn this into a business, Atlas Monroe, which is um, the distributor or the manufacturer. When do you decide that this is so good? I think we could sell it. Well, um, I, you know, the, the job that I worked at before it paid very well, um, definitely a a six figure income. And so it was just like, okay, are you going to keep this job that you have Mm -hmm. and, and remain safe? Or are you going to end this job that you have, take a risk and actually start your dream? Um, and I, I think that that decision, uh, what, what actually, um, uh, made that decision come into life was that, um, my partner before he was laid off Mm -hmm. and it was like, well, you know, we really need to stop talking about doing this business and actually do this business because you never know what can happen. And we just seen that, you know, with the coronavirus Mm -hmm. and, and how that just upended everybody's world. If you didn't have, you know, your own thing going, everybody's life just changed. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, it it was definitely something that's, you know, heart wrenching, but also something that really propelled us to do what, what was the needful. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, we said we were going to do catering. We've never catered. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, what actually ended up happening was I made a website. Nobody knew about this website. We didn't have any social media or anything like that. Um, I put the website up. I still had my job and, and randomly, uh, somebody sent an email saying, Hey, do you want to come out and do this, this large vegan event, large vegan festival at, uh, Grant Park in Chicago? Wow. Same place, same, same place where I went vegan. Wow. <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's coming full so, circle, huh? Exactly. Exactly. And so I'm like, I thought it was spam. I thought it was a joke because I nobody knew about our company. I didn't start it. I, I wanted to start it, but it, I had it. Right. It's that. still at this point, it's still in your head. Exactly. Well, it's, uh, it's in my head and there's a website that nobody knows about. Okay. So I'm like, this has to be a joke. This has to be spam. Mm-hmm. I leave the email sitting for like two months. And then I said, you know what? What if it's real? What if this is like a real opportunity. What if somebody really found this website that Mm -hmm. nobody knows about and it's real. (laughs) So I contact the guy Uh and he's like, yeah, it is real. Come out to Chicago. I I seen your, your chicken that you have. Um, it looks amazing. Come out. And so I tell my family, Oh my God, let's, let's, I, this is going to, this is going to happen. Now keep in mind you're, you're in San Diego. (laughs) I'm actually at this point, I'm in San Jose, California. Okay. You're in San Jose, California. And he's saying, Mm -hmm. bring this chicken to Chi-Town. Yes. And so I I sell my family a dream. I'm like, oh, you know, um, you know, with the ribs that we have, Uh uh, once the smoke starts going, people are going to come to our booth and and get the, get our food and it's going to go amazing. So I tell them, oh, it's going to go great. Mind you, I have no idea how it's actually going to (laughs) go. And so um, we get like we, we have a trailer and mm-hmm. in, our, in our truck and we we haul across the United States to Chicago. We end up getting a flat tire on the trailer. Um, we get to Chicago like 12 hours after um, we, we were supposed to set to oh, arrive right. still mm-hmm. before the event started. Mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. at midnight on the day of the event. Oh, wow. We, we end up setting up all night long from midnight to 11 o'clock during the day, which is when the event actually started. Mm -hmm. We're just setting up, trying to get everything ready as much as we can. Um, I remember seeing a long line wrapped around Grant Park. And Grant Park is where Lollapalooza is held. So this is a huge event. And I'm, I'm scared. I'm like, oh my gosh, what, what is going, what's going to uh-huh, happen? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Um, and so I'm like, oh, we're not ready. Oh my gosh. So 
of course, you know, the show goes on. And so they open the, the, the gates to the event and all these people come pouring in. And I'm thinking, oh, well, you know, it's fine because they don't know us. Mm -hmm. Within 15 minutes um, of this event starting, I look out and somehow our, our line is longer than a football field. I don't know what is going on. Wow. I'm very confused. Wait, hold that thought. <laughs> hold that thought. Let me get a break here. But when we come back, we're going to go back to Grant Park and back to the moment that Deborah knew that she had an idea that was steeped in greatness. Stay on point. We're back after this. Welcome back, everybody, to the OPT Network. Our guest this morning is Deborah Torres. She turned down $1 million on Shark Tank. She's now selling 1 million pounds of vegan fried chicken through her manufacturer, Atlas Monroe. And she's joining us to talk about how she birthed this dream that is just probably mind boggling at this point. So in 2017, you were at Grant Park. Your line is a football field long. And so what are you thinking? How, how are you going to even handle all of the people? Exactly. Um, I was so confused. I didn't know what was going on. Um, of course, I later learned that the event organizers posted a photo of the chicken. And wow. so all these thousands of people came to the event specifically for the food as that is going on as people are trying the food and walking around the event um word of mouth is spreading that we have the best fried chicken that anybody's ever tasted and i, and I have no idea what's going on i just see i see it playing out in real time and i'm so confused <laughs> and i'm just like oh you know i i remember actually my my father he worked at the uh, the gilroy garlic festival um uh, grilling ribs, real ribs, um, for 20 years. Mm -hmm. So he's used to, you know, seeing lines mm -hmm. and doing events. This is my first time. And I remember saying, Oh, you know, the smoke, Oh, it's going to, the smoke from the ribs is going to make people come, but he had it. We had, we weren't ready. And so, um, there were, there was no smoke from the ribs. And so I was so confused. Um, but as the event is going on, you know, they're coming and they're like, oh, we heard you have the best food. We heard you have the best food. The DJ of the event came to the booth, came to, around to the back and he's talking to me. He's like, I have to have your food. And I'm like, how do you even know? And he's like, everybody's talking about it. Uh, like what? Wow. Um, so yeah, this, this is how, you know, everything went and funny thing, actually, I remember at nighttime when we, when we had originally got there, the event organizers came up to us. They said, um, so how's your chicken? How is it? Like, what, what, how, how do you guys think it is? And my mom being like, you know, always rooting for me and all this, she's like, oh, you guys know Doomies, which is this, um, this uh, famous vegan restaurant in LA. Mm -hmm. She said, oh, you guys know Doomies? And they're like, yeah. And she's like, we're better than Doomies, right? Wow. <laughs> so the next day comes around. And at the end of the event, the organizers came up to us. They had come and they had gotten our, our chicken as well. And they tried it. So they come up to us at the end and they're like, oh, um, your chicken is the best fried chicken we've ever had, real chicken or not. And so we're like, yeah, thank you. And then they're like, oh, and by the way, we own Doomies in Toronto. <laughs> Quit it! <laughs> <laughs> wow! <laughs> oh How my, funny oh is gosh. that, huh? <laughs> and and so they love the chicken, and then so when the when the when the festival is over, you got to be dog tired, but you walk away knowing, okay, we've got something here. Yes, exactly, exactly. Um, from that event. Uh, we were just invited to multiple events. It just kept growing and growing and growing. So we ended up traveling to Houston, traveling to Toronto, traveling to New York, Oregon, just all, all over the United States and outside of the country. So when do you, um, when do you quit your job, Deborah? Oh, immediately. I mean, right. I mean, there was no, I, we're spending at the time, you know, um, we were in a shared kitchen. So you're making, you know, we're spending our days making 
by hand at that time, um, all this chicken for thousands of people at, for one, a one day event, mm -hmm, you know? Mm -hmm. So there was no, you know, Oh, doing this part time. And right. No, you're now in it full time. So, yeah. And so, so when do you decide, okay, we need to go on shark tank. How does that happen? Um, well, so, you know, as we're traveling to all these places and growing via word of mouth, um, there were like influencers and celebrities that were reaching out to us, um, you know, getting our product, having us ship our product to them, getting it, trying it, posting about it, having more people now know about it. So that was going on. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, uh, we were invited to the National Fried Chicken Festival. This is uh, late 2018. Okay. Um, and so we were invited to the National Fried Chicken Festival. We were the first and only vegan company to be invited to that event. Wow. And from that event, we were named best fried chicken out of all the real chicken by Time Magazine's Extra Crispy. Wow. Who even knew yeah. there was a fried chicken festival? Uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> and where was exactly. that at? <laughs> what, what part of the country is that in? That's in New Orleans. Right here where, where we are in, in the state of Louisiana. So you get named by Time Magazine as the best fried chicken, vegan or meat fried chicken. And so what do you do with that? From there, um, you know, I, I personally did not want to go on Shark Tank. That was like everybody kept saying, go on Shark Tank, go on Shark Tank, go on Shark Tank. And I was like so against it. Um, I finally would just why? cave and I was why? like, you why? know what? Why were you, why were you against it? Um, you know, I, you know, you, you, you're, you're on the show for what, maybe five to 10 minutes. I, I felt like I knew that there were going to be a lot of edits. You have like very small amount of time to, you know, represent your company and, and try to do it as best as you can. Um, and then, you know, what, depending upon if you, you get a deal or you don't get a deal, the public is going to judge that interaction that you had. Mm -hmm. um, and, and you have no control over that. And I, and I knew that going into it. And I felt like the way that we've worked so hard and so tirelessly, um, you know, I wasn't sure that what happened, our story would be told in the way that it actually occurred. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then so but you relent and, and you do get chosen to go on, on Shark Tank, which I'm sure that in itself had to be a feat. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, there's there's a, a large um, process to that. And so getting through it and getting through it and getting through it and getting through it. Um, yeah, it's, it's definitely an emotional roller coaster to say the least, mm -hmm. but I, I, overall, you know, I'm very grateful. I'm very grateful for, for that opportunity. It's something that I definitely don't take mm -hmm. for granted. Mm -hmm. Um, and the journey has been incredible, um, since, I mean, it's been incredible the entire time. So yeah, it's been unbelievable that I'll, I'll leave it at that. <laughs> okay. So tell me, you know, in that moment when you do have your, your time to make your pitch and your, your, your mind, I'm sure, is rolling to, to figure out, you know, what to say and how to, how to present your numbers and, and your product. What's going through your mind at that moment when you're getting all these questions, you know, fired at you? The number one thing uh, that, I, that I had just in my heart at that time was, I need to make sure that I've done everything in my, in my power. I need to make sure that I've said everything in my power to try to get this deal. Um, I felt like I just, I, I knew that, you know, you could just given when you watch Shark Tank, how, um, you know, they, there's a, a number of them and a small number of you. Right. And um, of course they're all going to ask their questions and pummel you with, lots of talking from, you know, and that's right. not normal. There's a lot of them in one of one of you. So and um, their experience is far vaster than yours. And when it comes to uh, multi multi million and even billion dollar businesses, right? Exactly. But not only that, you have to really understand and realize 
they've done this so many times. Your story is one of hundreds, thousands. Right. Um, so for, for you or for me, I should say, it's so personal and so delicate. Mm -hmm. And for them, it's, it's, a, it's, it's one of one in, right. you know, Right. It's it's uh -huh. it's a, just another story and another another person or or group trying to show why their business, you know, is uh, is viable and why they should invest. Let's take a break here, Deborah. But when we come back, I want to talk about that moment when there is an offer made and why you decide to say no comprende. Stay on point. We're back after this. Welcome back, everybody, to the OPT Network. This morning, we're talking about dreams becoming a reality and anything is possible when you do the work. Our guest this morning, Deborah Torres, she turned down one million dollars on Shark Tank and now she's selling one million pounds of vegan fried chicken. And so at that point when, OK, the first uh, Kevin, I think it is, he says, I'm out. You, you, you know, nothing, you don't have anything. And, and then I guess you're still trying to, to work at the percentages and the, and the money. You know, uh, Mark Cuban says he'll give you 500,000. And then the other gentleman says, okay, I'll give you 500,000 for a certain percentage of your company. And I'm sure it's going so quickly. What are you, what is your mind calculating at the time? How are you, how are you processing everything that's happening? Well, originally I was willing to take any deal. I was like, well, wow. you know, yeah, let's, let's make a deal. That's what I'm here for. Um, when, uh, when the first you, shark, when the first shark opts out, do you get scared? No, I really not, you know, trying to be mean in any way, but I did not want to work with him at all. So okay. it was, I honestly was and just, even though he was sitting right in front of my face, I don't even think I looked at him. I think just from watching prior episodes, I just was like, anything he says, I'm, I'm already, I mean, just being completely honest, actually sure. seeing when the episode where he called, um, the, the two black women, they had a lipstick company and he called, he, when, when they put their lipstick on, he called them colorful cockroaches that already made me like, okay, just ignore anything that he right. says, because he's going to try to get you off your game. Right. And I'm not going to be, I'm not going to let that happen. Right. So I really was basically ignoring anything that he said the entire time. Mm -hmm. And then, okay, so he's out. And then Mark Cuban comes back and, and they realize that you've got something and he offers 500,000. And so you're thinking what, when he offers you 500,000? I was definitely like, yes, my, my, I was definitely in my mind, like, yes, done. That was, that was it for me. Like I was for that deal. When did your mind change? Okay. So we were not able to, we were, what we were told was, you know, let them all say their, their piece and then speak mm -hmm. before we even got to answer, um, you know, the, any of them. Um, you know, Rohan had gotten up while I think maybe Lori was talking. Mm -hmm. And so while she's telling us her answer, Rohan gets up, goes over to Mark, whispers, starts to chatter with Mark right in front. Everything's going on. And mm -hmm. so it's kind of unbelievable because I've never seen this. Before. I've never seen that happen. Right. So as it's happening, it's like, what's going on? Um, and so, you know, they just before we even got to answer, they just changed it and then said, oh, well, actually, I'm taking back what I said about the 500,000. How about I'll give you a million dollars for 10 percent? And then it was just like, wait, what? <laughs> I didn't, mm -hmm. No, no, that's not that's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. So um, and it wasn't 10 percent of the company. It was, you know, I get. 10%, you get a hundred percent. I get 10% royalties. You would get the royalties and they would take your company? Basically. And then, and it wasn't even our company that they were taking. They were taking the rights. No. Okay. Wow. Mm. Yeah. So did you, did like, you well, understand well, that in, at that moment? Did you understand exactly what they were saying? I knew exactly what they were saying. Yes. And I didn't, you know, for me, 
it was it was it was a deja vu of what I saw in the movie uh, Founders with with McDonald's and how they promised something and then you know contracts were made with other company with other franchisees and whatever and they never saw a dime of what they were originally promised because mm-hmm. once somebody else has the rights to something right what do you have wow and so in that moment do you just you say i'm out we're out yeah it, i was flabbergasted i was definitely it, it was a realization of Oh, you do understand exactly what we're worth. You're willing to put a million dollars on it. You just don't want to partner with me. You want to take what I have. And so when you leave that moment, what happens next? In that moment, I just, I felt, uh, I was just, I think I was blindsided that, that like, oh, what just happened? I thought I had a $500,000 deal. I thought I just made a deal with Mark Cuban and then the whole, the flip happened. Mm -hmm. And so as the flip happened and I I realized, Oh, this is not going to go how I envisioned Mm -hmm. or how, how I planned. Um, I think I was taken aback, but I also, you know, the last thing that I said was I'll see you on the flip side. And I meant every word of that. Mm -hmm. I meant every word. (laughs) <laughs> wow. How prophetic was that? I'll see you on the flip side. Definitely, you know. Um And so when you when 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 your segment, your particular segment is over, how do you decompress from I went from 500,000, I went they went to a million and I turned it down. Where do we go from here? How do you decompress from all of that? I don't think that the decompression, I don't even know that it happened. Um, I think that realizing, because, you know, they were, they were saying like, you're not even worth that. Like you haven't made enough. Your valuation isn't high enough for 500,000. So it was like, okay, you you keep on saying that. And now you, now you're offering me a million. You're offering me twice as much. Mm -hmm. So you lie. So, I mean, not, you know, not you lied, but Basically, you you tried to tell me I wasn't worth right. five hundred thousand. Then you offered me double. It was now a, it I was it that. was the bait and switch, right? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Powerful, powerful story, uh, Deborah. Before we've got to let you go, tell people how they can connect with you, and we're going to have the rest of this conversation on our YouTube channel. Tell people how they can connect with Atlas Monroe and how they can get this incredible vegan fried chicken. Well, now that we have acquired our own multi-million dollar manufacturing facility, they can definitely join our mailing list. Um, that's at atlasmonroe.com slash mailing list. We will be going into grocery stores this year, so they can definitely uh, f- find out where by joining the mailing list. And then we'll also be available at several restaurants nationwide. So uh, definitely join the mailing list to find out where. We're also on Instagram, atlas.monroe. That's the handle. So, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. Amazing. Uh, Deborah, thank you for sharing your hope and your story with our listeners and viewers. You are absolutely amazing. Oh, thank you. Thank you. You as well. Thank you so much for having me. You're awesome. Indeed. (laughs) Hey, everybody, stay on point. We're back right after this.